Hello everyone, it's Michelle Mahar here today and I'm here today with Rena. Thank you so much Rena to for giving me your time to talk about these these um challenging times that we're going through right now and how to keep positive and get creative in your business. This is a great opportunity for innovation and creativity to flourish. So thank you and Absolutely. if you want to just Hi, us, Michelle. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank just, you so much for inviting me. I was looking forward to this, uh, you know, chat uh, with you and uh, everybody online. Uh, yeah, my name is Rina Cheskia. Some of you already know me. Know me through our networking events and. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, groups of ladies that uh, we work with. Uh, so basically, I am, a prof you know, my profession is uh, in marketing. I've spent the last 20 plus years working for, you know, the telco companies, um, uh, basically uh, putting together marketing plans and strategies for them. And in the past uh, 10 years, I started to realize the importance of digital marketing. And so basically, I went back to uh, school again and I did my digital marketing certification with the Canadian Marketing Association and I also last year after I quit my full-time job I uh, did my designation with Google so I did the Google certificate uh, for Google Analytics and Google Ads and um, you know on the side I had my own little digital store uh, curating uh, um, handbags for independent designers so i you know worked with shopify and basically uh when i quit my job i wanted to do something really different um i kind of really felt there were uh gaps in the digital world uh, when it comes to communicating with uh, women over a certain age so mature women um i just felt like there wasn't enough uh, representation uh or uh, you know, the content wasn't very relevant to women who are over 40 years old. Everything was kind of uh, put together for a certain demographic and age group. And so basically that's when I started my blog. Uh, so I do, I blog, um, uh, and my content is very much similar to uh, an, an online magazine. So I do a lot of um, informative and infomercial type of content in, in, in my blogs and uh, you know ultimately it's to provide value for uh, what I'm for the reader and at the same time monetize the blog um, uh, so that's what I do and on the side I do have some clients that I run a marketing uh, strategies for which is a combination of digital and traditional marketing right. so yeah right yeah. and I'm I'm um, I get your blog your your regular blog so i'm quite familiar with it what uh, sorry just for everybody what's the name of it elmuse yeah elmuse.com just so yeah. that we know it's out there and uh great information uh like you say it's it's definitely there was a hole there and you're providing a, such a service for women uh women over 40 and and you know important information for sure yeah yeah it's entertaining too <laughs> yeah and entertaining and great pictures thank you you always have great pictures that thank you, you. Uh, share on instagram and and everything as well so yeah. thanks um so now we're over two months that we have been isolating at home and um I know for myself at the beginning of it, there was a lot of fear. Everything was changing. It started with the live events being postponed where I had vendor tables. Um, March, April, May, I had things booked and, uh, and one after another, obviously they were, they were being postponed and, and now have been postponed some of them a couple times to the fall. So yeah. It, I, I started doing these interviews just because I know that I know so many fabulous, um, amazing entrepreneurs who have so much value to add. So, you know, we've had different topics, different conversations, more so at the beginning, it was more so about the fear and getting out of fear, keeping positive. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, we're two months in, we've kind of gotten used to whatever we might call the nor new normal, if you want to use that term um so what what how how have you felt going through these two months uh you know what it started off really just 
busy. Like I was busy because I was trying to balance between uh, work and uh, taking care of my boys, right? So, yeah. you know, you've got the school aspect and then, you know, working from home and then cooking and cleaning. And I, I think as a woman and as a mom or somebody who's, you know, as a female, I think we're doing more than what we did before this pandemic now yeah. that we have to leave the household you know and take care of everybody and, and everybody's that, home yes and run our careers home like, 24 hours a day three meals yeah. Oh. yeah yeah like and you know i mean i'm the type of person i when i'm when i work when i'm working i'm just really into what i'm doing and really constant you know i concentrate and i just dive into it but i'm just finding it difficult to kind of um, switch off when somebody's asking me to do something for them, right? So, <laughs> you know, yeah. like my son, for example, you know, he's my son, he's my baby. It's, it's just like I'm working at 12 o'clock, mommy, I'm hungry. So I'm now like, oh God, now I have to stop and take care of him. So, and I know I'm not the only one who's no. going through this. We're all going through that. So this is a huge, huge impact on the way I've been doing things since I was a teenager. So um, I'm, I'm hoping things um, hopefully will change and we'll figure out a, a much better circumstances. Um, you know, at least in the summertime, there's no school. So I'm hoping we'll, you know, will be less painful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you were already working from home before. Exactly. You were working, be but, but you were home. Um, so if you were working at, you know, still working at 12 and you were, you would just keep working. You didn't have the schedule that you didn't have to think about someone else's schedule. Yeah, exactly. So just working from home is still working, right? We're still working. Uh, exactly. But now you've got the kids. And now we have. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I know a lot of people are also dealing with uh, navigating their the online learning, whatever it looks like, with their kids, depending on the ages yeah. of their kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I only have one child, but I, I, you know, I'm sure that moms with, you know, more than one child, they have to figure out a way to navigate, you know, online with their kids if they don't have, like, a laptop for each family member. Some families have to share their laptops, right? True. So, yeah. You know, it, yeah. It is a challenge, it's, you know, and just, I, I don't know what the solution is going to be. I'm not the expert, obviously. Um, but I think, no. I think as, as long as we talk about it and share our challenges or, you know, like what you're doing right now is that you're opening it up for women to kind of sh share their stories and relate to one another as, as opposed to just being at home and wondering if you're doing the right thing or, or not. Yeah. Right. And that, that's something very important. They, uh, <clears throat> there, I had seen a lot of judgment online initially, a lot of women judging other women and, and, and just different, you know, different aspects. And the thing is, this is not a time for judgment and we're always the hardest on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to make sure the message is out there to women that you, uh, don't judge yourself. You don't have to do everything. You cannot do everything. You can't no. be the one and you know one and all for everybody. Yeah. And, and there's there's so many emotions to be going through. During yeah. I'm plus navigating, like you say, the families at home, children at home. The children are going to want your um, your attention at certain times, and you're still trying to run a business. Yeah, you have to give yourself grace to just spend some time. Self care is so important as well, right now. Yes, yes. Taking that exactly. time for yourself out, whether it, um, whether some people I know have morning routines, and and are practicing meditation or mindfulness or something that gets them sets them up for the day. I know that just, um, just getting up and getting ready for the day. Whether yes. you know, with some makeup and some hair, um, fixing your hair, some makeup, getting getting dressed, it just sets the tone for the day. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. Even a cup of coffee now, just, you know, outside in the morning and oh, just listening to the nice. birds. Yeah. Listening to the birds and just like, you know, enjoying the sun and the nice breeze and watching, you know, the leaves grow on the trees. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's a good way to, yeah, as you said, to take care of ourselves and meditate. I, for me, I, I love running. I've been actually, I started this new routine with my son. He's on his bike and I'm on my feet. And uh, we'll just go, you know, explore different routes. Uh, I'll, I'll do my workouts because I can't go to the gym, obviously. Um, so, yeah, it keeps me active too, which is because I'm, I'm the type of person that I need to kind of release my <laughs> energy physically. Like I have to work out, you know. So this is, uh, this is a good uh, relationship builder with my, with my son. So Yeah, that's nice. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's um, happening for a lot of families as well. Just getting yeah. out in nature, spending the time together. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, we we started this mid March, so now, like you say, we see the leaves coming on the trees and everything. And now, finally, we have some nicer weather. We it's been yeah. kind of a cool spring. Like, I yeah, think it was quite cold when it was Easter. Yes. So, yeah. At least and now beautiful weather is coming you can get outside and um nature is a way to rejuvenate and, exactly. and uh, relax Take and rejuvenate your energy as well yeah totally yeah yeah that is for sure so what would um so as we saw everybody everybody went to online because that's obviously you know now, that yeah. at this point is the only option. There's no more live events. We don't even know when there's going to be some live events. I saw some people doing the uh, previously online events where, you know, networking, different networking groups are doing it online on a monthly basis. And I even saw some with little vendor tables so that mm -hmm. online you could actually go and visit a vendor table and then... Yeah. You would have somebody come and obviously you have to have all your products there to show everyone and then go on and the person goes to the next table and so on. So there's definitely some great technology out there. Yes. Yeah. To help people with. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, uh, there's tons of ideas right now you can experiment with new ideas, innovative ideas, and people are, um, the recipients to these kinds of, you know, so, something new. Um, you know, I like, you know, you see a lot of people trying to repeat the same pattern and, you know, copy different, you know, specific um, tactics. But I think it's the innovators are the one actually are going to get the, the, you know, more attention and, and opportunities to uh, to grow their audience and and uh, you know get get leads and opportunities that way. So oh, uh, definitely, I think this is a time we're going to see a lot of innovation. Yeah, but um, at the same time, some of these businesses that are coming to online, you know, like the online, but like the networking groups that would happen live. I don't think we're going to replace live events because there's nothing that beats being live in person with somebody you know you yes we need that we're social yeah. beings we need that connection as well but yeah. uh now they're going to have the online platform where they ha host these networking events plus they'll have a live one and mm -hmm. with the online you have a global audience too correct yeah so i think there's a lot of opportunity out there to you know innovate and think of where business is going in the future yeah i think that there's always going to be that blend between traditional and digital um at least in our lifetime i don't see it going fully digital in the near future there will be changes i know some magazines for example like industry magazines that used to publish every month uh COVID now has forced them to publish every two months, for example. So they're not doing their monthly editorials or lumping a couple of editorials together. But what they have noticed is that they've noticed a significant increase to their website or their digital uh, magazine because people are at home. They're not receiving that, you know, copy 
So they are kind of going, you know, now changing their behavior and they're, um, you know, going online, like to see what's going on in terms of news, industry news, for example, um, all of that to keep kind of like keep up to date on things. Um, but I don't, I know that also some retailers are closing down their stores. I think there's going to be shift in the way we shop. Right. Yes, we're going to be shopping online, but we're still going to need that touchy, you know, feely experience. Um, I, you know, I know like, uh, I think like with Generation Z probably will have a completely different experience than what we or the millennials have grew up to which is basically visualizing and seeing things around us so there's still going to be that aspect of going and seeing something it might not be the kind of like uh, channel or the way where you're going to actually buy something but it's going to be more of a display uh and um uh, what do you call it? a gallery style shopping where you know like what we do in our events like all these like booths and, and, and you know vendor booths that's still gonna that's still gonna be there there's still gonna be opportunities for people to go and attend events and and basically uh for the vendors and and, and designers and and retailers or from product perspective to showcase their products but ultimately, at the end of the day, the consumer is probably going to be more inclined to go buy that product online at a late, later date. So it's just a shift in the way we we shop. Um, and yeah, there was th th that blend is still going to be like a blend between traditional and uh, and digital. But yes, it's it's basically now shifting the way of like. From, from just trying to source out all our clients from like a networking event or from like a walk into a store to finding ways to attract these clients digitally online. So um, one of the things that I've kind of like talked about in my blog, because I have a section for marketing in my blog is that every business, regardless of your size, you should have a marketing budget. Um, and it's, it's not, it's not your business plan. It's actually a segment within your business plan that you actually have to allocate for marketing. So if you're going to go, and that's based on my experience, if you want to drive traffic to your website, if you, you know, if you want to create a digital store, which you probably should, um, you need to, to, first of all, find out what is your strategy to drive traffic to your website why would want why would people a want to shop from you online and um how are you going to build your credibility online and presence online so these are very important aspects and figuring out how much are you going to spend on your marketing to advertise your product online um i i think the price now the cost of digital advertisement is gonna increase because there's going to be more uh, shops set up online and there's going to be uh, dominance and still the monopoly of the bigger retailers so um, for a small business has to face these challenges and figure out okay how are they gonna set together put together a strategy that would help you know drive the traffic there's so many ways to do that um, one of it is advertising. The other one is doing affiliate marketing, uh, you know, working with the influencers and bloggers because these guys, they're not going anywhere. Um, they are available, available online. They have credibility. They have their audience. So it's kind of like find a niche that with an influencer or a blogger that can communicate and help you build credibility. It's kind of like the magazines in the past. That's what the magazines did. They promoted a product. They promoted a new brand, right? So now right. you're going to see that shift from the mass marketing towards more uh, focused marketing. And a lot of the big retailers are allocating influencer budgets in, within their marketing plans. So they are working with influencers. And mm -hmm. what you see online is all sponsored it's all paid for it's all planned it's not as authentic as people perceive it so 
that's something like small businesses and medium sized businesses should start, you know, kind of experimenting with and um, putting together plans and, and strategies to find ways to drive that, you know, digital traffic to their website. Right, right. So it's really important to get your message clear and your market clear and who your ideal client is. And, and I yeah. have heard in the, uh, especially recently, how, how figuring out your niche and, and getting really clear. And although <clears throat> sometimes you, you want to serve everybody and you think that your business is open to everybody, uh, you know, whoever wants, whoever has money is your client, but that's not, that's not going, that's not an effective strategy at all. Because no, what, you're, you're yeah. open to everybody. You're going to have no clients. Like, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you can technically serve, more than one demographic right yeah. so you create an avatar for each client you know i'm your client right my name is rena i live in woodbridge i am in my 40s but not that's not to say that mary who is 30 is not going to be your client either it's just like who's mary versus rena you know what what's you know who am i as 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 a generation x person right like i'm gen right. x Right. How do you talk to me and how do you cater and how do you basically build a relationship with me within the, you know, the content that you're creating for somebody like me, you know, versus a 30 year old mom, you know, like, how are you going to tailor your message to her? So it's about, you know, you build the demographics and then you build the content and the consistency in, uh, in with, you know, communication with each of this demographic Rena she's in her 40s she's going through menopause you know what she's not a new mom she's never going to be a new mom so how do you talk to me versus talking to you know again mary who's probably a new mother you know so it's 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 <laughs> it's just figuring out who you're talking to and and you know making sure that your audience knows that so even if you're going to create for example um you know, Instagram, you can create more than one Instagram account. It could be one for Rena and one for Mary. And so you talk one way with Mary versus different way with Rena. But it's the same, it's the same business. It's the same person. You can create up to five Instagram accounts that you can link to one another. So there, there's so many ways you can do these things, right? Um, so it, it, it's, it's a lot of thought uh, put into um uh, putting together a marketing strategy for for a business, and these are these are some of the tips um, and some of the ideas and creatives that marketers do usually test uh, and put together for their clients. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So because people see that social media post and think that oh, somebody just thought that up today and and posted it, but no, it's it's uh, I <clears throat> there's a whole foundation that that lies beneath beneath all, uh, all of it yeah, and, yeah, and it is um more important than ever now to get your message clear and differentiate yourself so, so that you are talking to um you know you're talking your client's language i guess i guess maybe. exactly exactly yeah 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 so. So anyway, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else and I completely forgot right now, <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to come back to me. <laughs> yeah. So sorry about that. But um, like you say, everybody's online now. The attention is there more than ever before. Um, yeah. Some people are, some people are at home and, and actually looking for something to do. <laughs> so yeah, this is also a time for people to, uh, sit down with yourself and figure out who you are and what you're really passionate about. And, and perhaps there's a business that you wanted to do and, and you didn't, you know, you, you were too busy before running around all the time. And now's yeah. the time to spend some time getting creative and perhaps setting up an online store or, or, or just if you had a side business, maybe focusing on it. There's all kinds of, learning out there that you can do online 
yeah yeah exactly there's so many things like even me you know what i am considering uh, learning something completely new right now you know again it's within marketing it's an evolving uh skill so i'm considering and you know investing in that too uh, to kind of you know expand my my knowledge and experience right um so yeah there's there's so many things you can do right now so many opportunities and use as you said people are at home they are online they are browsing they're not necessarily shopping today because a lot of people lost their jobs a lot yeah. of people you know they cannot you know they still want to you know have to put like food on the table but it's kind of it's the time to actually build relationships with these people and connect with them it's about connectivity uh, with with your potential audience and just be there like right now is the best time to just sit and and provide value um, you know with value could be a piece of advice you know something to help them go through the day you know it could be a recipe right it could be uh, you know anything like could be for example like you Michelle you know you might want to show your audience okay well a piece of my jewelry came off how do I fix that at home so uh, something this is an idea is like okay you're you kind of give them an insight on what you're what you do but you know at the end of the day honestly even like if for me okay a piece of for example you know a piece of crystal might might fall off my 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 bracelet i don't know how to fix it you're going to show me how to fix it great i fixed it but at the end of the day do you think i'm actually going to turn this into a career or a skill no right. <laughs> i'm still gonna come back to you because i know you helped me in the past so um, i'm still gonna come and, and shop from you because now I, I truly appreciate your work even more because i tried it and it's not easy so there, there are so many things right now like you can show people like what you do is truly valuable because of the effort that you put into it if that uh, that brings up a great point uh for, for some of the people that are hair salon and nail salon owners. And every one of us who has had to navigate through this, um, trying to do something with our hair on our own or trying to do something with our nails on our own, we will definitely appreciate the value of it going forward. And we, while we've had to do this on our own, I'm looking forward to going back to the nail salon when it opens and, and also the hair salon. Although I just did my, um, my, my hair, um, stylist mixed up a base color dye for me to do my, my yeah, stuff yeah. to get me through, get rid of my gray roots that I had there. Yeah. Uh, oh, great job. Actually. I'm very impressed because I still mine are, are growing. See, and I haven't so, touched them. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is that the customers are still going to be there. And you want to keep top of mind. And like you say, serving right now, serving your clients and building that relationship, this is a great time to do that. Because, yeah. you know, and, and she did this for me, um, mixing up the dye and everything so that, you know, she knows that I'm happy that she has helped me get through these times. So I'll be, you know, first one. I've already told her to put me on her list. Well, she already yeah. knew yeah exactly and, that's and another you know story <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah exactly just and I, I put a blog actually it was a couple of weeks ago about okay now what you know kind of like the aftermath and as a small business what should you be doing now because things are opening up right so right. i know there are things that you know kind of i'm not touching i'm not going to talk about which are you know procedures and whatever these are things that yes you need to basically make sure that if you have a shop basically to follow the government and health uh, the ministry of health procedures and whatever so that's one thing but then okay well how you know what are you doing about your clients and your prospects do you have like you know start kind of like talking to them and telling them you know, we are working, like, communicate to your clients that, you know, we are working with the government, make sure that when we open, everything is going to be safe and whatever. And we're stocking up on our inventory and show, show some of the new stuff that is going to be available to attract your clients. If, if you have a shop, show them the new products or that you're receiving you know maybe show them the fact that okay we are disinfecting them so running the steamer on the clothes you know make sure everything is clean like so there, there are so many things that you can show right now in the 
backstage and um, and also if you have like in terms of like the employees how to communicate with that but but the blog has a lot more information than what i just outlined is Mm -hmm. and then it's the time basically now to look at what you have done in the past that didn't work um what do you do with that stuff if it's not working you know are you going to continue are you considering to replacing it with something else right like kind of the innovation or is it a matter of kind of like um, if you were doing something that was still working, but you weren't so sure if you want to continue doing, why would you want to break some, what would you want to stop something that's not broken, right? Like just continue doing what you has always worked for you and time, you know, consider in reinventing and inventing uh, new ways of doing things uh, for your business. So that's the perfect time to do now and start planning, start putting together your promotional offers um giveaways um there's so many you know like just strategies and tactics to get you you the, the clients or your prospects excited and you know kind of like restarting that engine you know you're kind of like pressing okay okay like guess, guess what's happening you know we're working on that there is once we you know before we open we're gonna have this big blast giveaway for example uh because we're celebrating, you know, kind of like a new milestone. Um, so that, that kind of thing. And anyway, check the blog. It's in there, all the details. Uh, okay. Of- yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll put that under here for sure. The, um, yeah. I did hear something else that just said, this is the time to over communicate. So like you say, just, just let everybody know what's happening. Even if you, even, you know, to the fact that you can't open yet, but you're getting ready. Um, yeah. And I know my, my hairstylist, she, she owns the salon and she is, uh, she was spending full days there just getting, getting things ready because there's a whole procedure and disinfecting and all, you know, a lot of things that are going to be required by places like that, where you are high touch. Yes. Yes. So yeah, exactly. Just making sure that people know what's happening so that you keep top of mind. Yeah, because there's yeah. going to be no shortage of customers and clients yes. for that. Yes. Just like yes. um, just like with the clothing, you keep seeing all these clothing retailers that are uh, filing for <clears throat> bankruptcy protection. Yeah. Um, you know the retail landscape is going to change. I'm sure, like you said, we're saying, but the fact is the need is still there. We still need clothes. <laughs> Yes, so we still, so we still to want that. to try them on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's so many opportunities for designers and retailers, like small niche retailers, to kind of um, cater to their community, you know, focus on your neighborhood, your existing clients, and find ways, ways again, to sell online for prospects, you know, outside your geographical area. You know, like for example, Honey, they sold their, you know, you can only buy from their store, Honey store, basically. I oh, right. Know. Yes. Um, but they have now moved to digital. You can actually buy stuff online. Now, they don't have everything online, but at least they're putting stuff online. If you like it, you can just go buy it online. So, um, you know, retailers should definitely, like boutiques should consider going online and you know see if there's like other you know build some sort of affiliate program start working with bloggers in your and influencers in your neighborhood uh, you know to help them basically push and promote uh, the products in the store so invite them over you know um, uh, work out a deal with them where you know they can take care of your marketing and, and, and push promote it you know, it's, it's not just like one account that can do the promotion, but multiple accounts can work to do that too. So that's, that's another idea. Right. I think there's going to be a lot of um, collaboration. Collaboration is something that is going to be key in the future. And like yeah. you say, affiliate, affiliate marketing is definitely something to, yeah. to look. Yeah. Yeah. As well. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's great. I like the setup in your background really cute oh thank you 
You were working on that before, right? Yes. Yeah, I still need flooring and a ceiling, though. But <laughs> at least the back looks okay. And I sourced out that, uh, my dresser. It's beautiful. Uh, there's a little one over there. You can't see it as well. But I, I uh, paint, um, it wasn't that color. I repainted it. It's from the 70s. But I, I took in my blow dryer. I have a hot pink blow dryer. And I took that to the paint store and said, can you do a color match on that? Oh my God, that's and so he cute. Said, I don't know, I don't know. And he looked, well, first of all, he looked at me like I had two heads. And then he said, <laughs> let me try. And he was able to get that. So it's like the high gloss, you know. And, and uh, so it, uh, yeah, I really liked it. The black and white and then the pink, it goes with my brand. That's part of my color. Yeah, it's you know? beautiful. I love it. Very oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. And, and your you. necklace looks amazing. Yes, this is how light uh, with the hematite, so. It's beautiful. Yeah. So cool. I think that, um, you know, we're going to see a lot of shifts. And yeah. initially, there was so much fear. You didn't want to be selling, didn't want to be selling, didn't want to be selling because you didn't want to look like, you know, you're trying to sell when everybody's panicking. But uh, <clears throat> the fact is that people still, there are still needs. We still need to wash our hair. You still need to um, get dressed. We're not going to run around naked. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and the fact is now jewelry, to me, is more important because now you're on Zoom, so you got to look good when you're doing your exactly. wedding. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think it's just a matter of like, it's, you could, you, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, honestly, people were buying. Uh, I have, I'm plugged into affiliate programs and I've seen a spike in my sales online. But again, it's, it's kind of like you're not doing a direct sale, right? Like it's kind of like, here's what's happening. You know, here are some ideas you throw in. It's, it's just sharing ideas. And, and that's what it is. Education. It's yeah. educating and building that customer relationship is more, is, 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 is it's no different than before when we built that yeah. customer and client relationship live at different networking events. Now you're doing it online. Yes. Yeah but it still comes down to relationship building and educating and serving your clients. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Well, thank you, Rena. That's been a great conversation. Well. And nice chatting with you. I'm going to put your blog underneath the, uh, you know, your link underneath awesome. this interview when I put it up as well for, you know, some great information that you have provided for people. Yeah. The, the fact is on online's here to stay. Yeah. But it's not going to replace all the live, but it's the perfect, you know, if you can have online plus live, it's perfect mix. Yeah. And if people uh, are interested in, in uh, you know, learning more about marketing and how to strategize online, um, I do have my blogs, but I'm also thinking of slowly expanding um, that aspect of uh, my blog to do more um, a marketing content uh, for uh, small and medium-sized businesses. So yeah. it's going to evolve. It's part of my plan. Yeah, to evolve that's, it. Uh, that's great. I think that is definitely something that uh, is much needed. So. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I look forward to seeing that as well. Thanks, Michelle. And I look forward to when we can see each other in person again. Uh, yeah, definitely. Me too. It's going to happen soon, hopefully. <laughs> yes. yes, for sure. At least now we can enjoy this beautiful weather. Yeah, and, enjoy um, it. Yeah. I, I love the summer myself. I'm not a winter person, so I really Me neither. Love yeah, me neither. I love, I love summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Take care. And, uh, take care. And bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Can you